send you back to outer space. They'll be finding your guts all over the cosmos. Take on those modern. No, you can't breathe easy. <laughs> oh, thanks. Sure, take the cap. Never know what that comes in handy. Who are the dead guy? What do you make of all this? Considering he doesn't seem connected? Of course, he created you with some out of mouth, but I imagine he didn't spare you from the ability to hear. I want you to enter my personal cabin. It's a quaint little thing perched a few aces east of the inn. You want me to go outside? You and our player friend will add a final dimension to this story. You want me to go outside and add a final dimension? Also, this isn't surprising. Um... But yeah, everyone has been in some way interconnected, even if just by game works. But they've all been interconnected in some way or another. But this guy, we have nothing. What do you mean, add another dimension? There's your cabin. Uh, no, here's your cabin. So what the hell is this thing? Stack of coins. Oh, this is an outhouse. I got the coins, which is nice. I haven't been able to use half of them. Hmm. You don't talk, which is kind of creepy. Oh! I didn't even realize what I was doing. I, d I just did things. Found enough coins for soda. Good achievement. Crack of vending machine. I s insert all those coins and I don't even actually get a soda? What? What the hell is that about? Hey! Uh. Oh. We just entered the crazy basement. What memory could we be going into with this guy? He doesn't even seem finished. Walk. Magnum opus. What the hell does that mean? Uh. Oh, crap. Okay. Right. This is Lionel Snell. If you're hearing this, it's Lionel. because you turned on the developer commentary for my latest game. Magnum opus, really, called Walk. So, I'm pretty sure that's probably actually the developer. Like, the real developer of the real game. But this is the guy. This is the only thing that interconnects every single one of these games, including Super Weasel Kid and this guy. Everything is interconnected by this guy. By this developer. Whoa, whoa, the scene whoa, whoa. looking at is a model of my childhood bedroom. This right here is where Super Weasel Kid was conceived. Take it in. It's worse than mine. That weasel was my favorite pet. I called him... Yeah, you guessed it. Weasel Kid. Adorable. But who the hell are One you? One of my favorite games at that age was Cooking Granny. I thought Chef Bryce was the coolest. Bryce, I've been calling Bruce. Yeah, you know how that turned out. <laughs> and that's Mr. Shrewd. The two always made little squeaks and chirps at each other. I like to imagine they were talking. Hmm. Shrewd would be this wise parental figure giving advice to Weasel Kid. Yeah, until the Weasel Kid stopped listening. My original plan for Walk was to have it be an almost non-interactive experience. Just allow the player to explore and contemplate. Mm -hmm. I did some market research, though, and, well, that kind of game was falling out of vogue. 
not much money in oh, it. Fuck. So I jammed in some real gameplay. Really? I thought that since this is about my life as a developer, why not show the player what it's like to make a game? I mean, this is oh. like a way dumbed down version of the stuff I do, but but to the average gamer, it's a challenge. Especially when your mouse setting is so freaking high. I remember when I first got the jumping code oh, right oh. and hooked it up to a keyboard button. <sighs> that dopamine rush electrified my childhood brain. I can imagine. Oh, hey there. I'm the GameWorks assistant, but you can call me Irvin. Looks like you need a little help adding enemies to your game. I've got you covered, pal. Irving came as part of the GameWorks package. I was a little hesitant about oh. using an AI at first, but he became really helpful. So Irving... So their world that l exists within the virtual world, they're interacting with us, so helping developers. Okay. It didn't take long to realize how much I depended on Irving. He assured me that it was easy for him to come up with enemies and non-player characters for me, so I let him do his job. Hmm, bad idea. There we go. Irving told me we couldn't get the original Super Weasel Kid to walk. Something about losing the files. Huh. Kind of a shame, I guess. Lots of files, huh? No, he didn't lose the files. Oh, what the hell? He didn't lose the files. There wasn't ever files to begin with. It was a real world with real characters that really existed. But they just allowed you to think that it was in fact a game that was developed by you. When in reality... He's helping create worlds and jobs and other stuff for NPCs. And we just killed him. Maybe swap this over to this Goomba? Make him walk? Ah, there we go. So I can take control of just about anything. There we go. The success of Super Weasel Kid paralyzed me. I, I could tried tell. starting a few different games, but I kept comparing them to my big hit. What would people That's think the worst if I put out to something do. that was worse? That I had just gotten lucky the first time? That I'm a one-trick pony? Yeah. Eventually, I settled on making a sequel. Super Weasel Kid Radical Road. Hmm. Thing is, though, it's not... You don't always have to overshadow your previous successes sometimes it's best to just try different things if you don't try different things you will go insane i'd been playing a lot of fighting games at that age always loved those i wanted to make one but i wasn't quite as talented as i would become so that's why i just had to add combat to radical road okay whoa i don't know so his previous things. Okay, so now I need to interconnect these. Okay. So that's why the punching was there. He liked fighting games, but he didn't quite know how to make it. And some of the stuff like walking and jumping, those are already done because he has basically... It was just exhilarating to beat the shit out of that Grunda. <laughs> but the critics really came down on me for that part. Oh, come on! It left me feeling like... I had no idea what people wanted. Oh, trust me, no game developer realistically knows what people want, and half the time, at least from personal experience, people don't know what the fuck they want either. If we made games based off what we thought people wanted and not what we could do and what we wanted to do for the story and otherwise, um... Well, let's just say we'd never have any video games made in any timely manner, let alone made at all. Oh. 
There he is. Radical Road was met with mixed reviews. Of course. It made me panic. I resolved to put away Super Weasel Kid forever and try Fair something enough. new. To top it off, my shrew died. Oh, yeah. So that's why Mr. Shrew was gone. Mr. Shrewd was long dead at this point. Shrews just don't live that long. The Weasel Kid actually escaped, if you can believe it. I took him outside did. one time, and he slipped out of my hands and ran into my neighbor's rose garden. I searched for hours, but the garden was pretty big, and the thorns were painful. Hmm. Interesting. I'd get emails once in a while, people asking to make deals, wanting to capitalize on my IP. It had been a couple of years now since Radical Road, and one day I just said, Fuck it. Fine. I sold the franchise to the highest bidder. Oh, no. That's... Never a good idea. Lonnie Sneal. So, Lonnie, that is... That is everything. Lonnie is our connection to everything. When I saw what they did with Super Weasel Kid, I felt a little part of myself die. But I was 18 years old and loaded. Huh. It was actually one of the best years of my life. Really? The next scene is based on my foray into larger scale game development. The plan? Make a fighting game. Not everyone remembers, but okay, just a jump a little bit higher. You're almost there. Anyways, as I was saying, I don't get nearly enough credit for starting one of the most popular fighting game franchises in history. What, Combat Arena? Ah, uh, it's a beauty, isn't it? I put my Whoa. weasel bucks to use and bought this place with cash. Then I hired a team. I hired my childhood friend Carla to work at my new studio. Huh. She was halfway through a degree in computer science, but I offered her a huge salary. Whoa, hard to say no to that. Uh huh. No, oh, definitely. You know that? Yep. So you made Combat Arena. Or at least you think you did. I bought the rights for my favorite game character. That is, my favorite character I hadn't made myself. Integrating Bryce into Combat Arena was harder than I thought. I had a lot of help from Irving. Yeah, I can tell. So, you weren't a game developer. You were being used by Gameworks to develop what they wanted him again. Carla's first order of business was to tell me that I had designed too many male characters. Fair enough. I tried to tell her that Steambot Willie was genderless, but she insisted. So I created Chandrell while she worked on Sado. Oh, she made Sado. If you don't know, Sado is the creepy, smiling, powerful thing. The thing that no matter... That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Ever since Carla created Sado, I get these weird, annoying bugs in my games. And I'm still getting them in Walk. So... She's some sort of... Demon creature? I really don't want to do this. So... Oh, Sado's the... Sado's the bigger piece of the story because he's the weird one. He's the only other piece that we've never been able to explain. So what the hell did she do? There we go. And to be fair, you need a few female characters, a few male characters, a little bit of both. Never hurts. Here we go. Got a punch in. Whoa! I'm not exactly sure what Carla did while she was creating this, you know. She told me some mumbo jumbo about pushing Gameworks to its limits. That character was eerie, to say the least. So, well, let's be clear Gameworks can probably create things. If she was pushing it to its limits, then that means she was creating a demonic character and just giving it, feeding it more and more and more and more and more power. 
to try and break GameWorks. Maybe she realized what was truly going on and she was trying to do not trying to do something about it. She wanted. I don't, I don't know what her goal was with it, but that's a problem. So Sato's the real issue here then. Look at that door. That's exactly what it looked like in real life. Solid antique, hand carved, gold nameplate. I was hiring people who were twice my age. I had to make sure they understood who was in charge. Oh, that's not a great way to play it. But okay, love the love couch. Making Combat Arena gave me my first glimpse into the... Well, to be frank, uh, the stupidity and immaturity of gamers. That you just and hit on the head. Damn, <laughs> dang. We got complaints about how this or that character was overpowered, <laughs> underpowered, too boring. Ugh, I never wanted to work on a fighting game again. Hey, Arvin. But I'm not fighting a guy with no moods assigned. Working on it, thank you. Interesting. So she was giving power to Sato, and Sato was slowly taking over. And admittedly, yeah, I can imagine that's a never-ending thing in fighting games. No matter what you do, someone's always going to be unhappy with it. I think that's actually why Super Smash Bros. does really well. No one character is over... Well, yeah, some characters are overpowered. Like, I remember watching, um... I can't remember the channel's name. They did a entire no level up, no like um like upgrade type thing playthrough of the campaign of uh Super Smash Bros, which I didn't even know it had a campaign. And they show um some of the characters were just overpowered and could absolutely tear apart other characters, and then other ones couldn't do crap against certain characters. It was amazing. But you imagine something Mortal Kombat-ish, that's a constant issue that you're having to fix. So you can only set it to five. Give you your hits. Five damage, so he's gonna kill him. There we go. Seen by Willie so overpowered. Clearly get doesn't get nerfed. I'm quitting the beta and never buying the game. Okay. <laughs> Thing is, this gonna be people like that no matter what. Sometimes it's a skill issue. Sometimes it's reality. Sometimes the character is overpowered, and sometimes people just can't play worth a damn. It's making. Powerful enough, but just underpowered so that he loses. Make people happy. And you made him trash. And here's the other side of the coin. You try and balance it out and you piss other people off. What the hell is that game logo? That is problematically concerning. What do you want me to do? Make him better. Oh, this isn't good. There we go. I have to admit, though, coding the punches and kicks was everything I had hoped it would be. I'd sit in my office for hours just watching these characters go to town on each other. Fair enough. That's Sometimes kind of like they could actually mood. Oh. So you started to realize, huh? May actually be able to feel it. There we go. You play against Steambot Willy and he always wins. Like every other time, you have to give him. You gave him a block ability that's OP. <laughs> Would replace it. Okay. 
Let's try this again, then. Give him the explicits. How about that? <laughs> yeah, but now he gets absolutely trashed. What now? Oh, uh, really? Give an old turn move. Okay, let's give him an old turn move. He becomes a transformer. We're gonna make Optimus Prime. What is this? Oh, God. There, there. Do that. There. Get the Antachis to here to do that. Hey, Irving. Didn't realize I was fighting you. Whoa. Banned. Sorry, pal. Ugh. God, it was such a relief to ship that game. I hated it by the end. But since my fingers had touched it, it turned to gold. <sighs> I still had my contract with Game Funa, so I sold the franchise for another boatload of cash. Huh. You seem to do that quite often. Now that my studio was bigger, richer, unstoppable, it was time to take on something huge. An epic fantasy adventure that only a studio like mine could accomplish. Lindaria. This is when I made Secrets of Legendaria. Legendaria. Lindaria, I like mine better. So, you can t Oh, and Carla was involved with all of it, so... Sato was there every time as well. Yeah, except for Super Weasel Killed Kid, I think Sato was in every one of the games. And we trashed all of them because the characters got tired of it. They got tired of the games, so they trashed them. Ooh. I had been pushing the team really hard to finish the game, but see? I rewarded them sometimes. See, I'm like you're trying to justify things. Carla and I were no longer friends. Actually, that might be putting it lightly. We hated each other. Her ego was just too big to stand in the shadow of my greatness. Her ego? Jesus. Also, um... Let's be clear. She's not innocent either. She created a demonic being that is now terrorizing all other there game characters. There was a characters. heated debate about which character should be the star of Secrets of Legendaria. In the end, Carla won over the studio, so we went with Chandrel. Chandrel. Who cares what I think, right? <laughs> Even the commentary is kind of opinionated. I put everything into that game. Oh, the stream. I hired the best programmers, the best designers. I burned through my fortune fast. Oh. But this game was going to be epic, goddammit. I paid the biggest gaming streamer to play it live, with hundreds of thousands watching. And we screwed it all up. Uh, hmm. Where's that damn mechanic? Try this. Mechanic. <laughs> huh. Yeah, you like that switch mechanic? Pretty cool, huh? Still got it. Interesting. Oh, that path is blocked off like that, and it's open like that. Gotcha. Hey, it's her! Oof, not again. I guess I was done with this stuff after last two. Hey, Irving! I don't want to be in this stupid puzzle game. And how are you holding up Faceless Joe? Dull? I figured. Hmm. I'm guessing I have to fight that slime. I have to solve some brilliant puzzle to open the gates. Okay. Try uh, gates. There we go. Easy enough. There you go. Makes sense that they choose me for this game. Should 
Lendigar is gone, also a czar. Hmm, Vladimir too. All they got left is the town mechanic. Wait, this is after? Oof, here we go. This is after everything that occurred. Wow. Talk about rock bottom. <laughs> kind of our fault, though. <laughs> Haven't been decompressed in a while. Cool. Uh, gonna need some moves. Here we go. Give you a fireball. Wow, 150. We're a tough slime. Ooh, that one, that's one tough sign. I'm gonna need some more mana. Do that. Do that. Close you off. Hit you again. There we go. Mana wave. There you go. 80 mana. You you need nowhere near 80 mana. There we go. Hey, level up. The stream had been going all right with the odd hitch or two, mm -hmm. but things took a terrible turn for the worst right near the end. Hey, Vlad. It's chaos. That's going. Whatever that is, I might need it. Working on it. Trust me, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working the back door. Shh. Don't speak about what I just inadvertently said. There we go. Clear. It boost. There you go. Supercharge. Don't worry, you'll be fine. So if I just keep supercharging until I have absolutely have to attack, which like is now. Ooh, I made a bad choice. Could be in it though. Secrets of Legendaria bomb. Oh! Carla had left bugs in there intentionally to sabotage me. I'm sure. It must have been that because everything went wrong. Whoa. And everyone saw it live. The game had no hope of recouping costs, so I took funds from the severance packages and ran. I couldn't even afford my apartment anymore. I, I moved can south to find some cheaper real estate. Huh. Living so... in the desert was. A miserable experience. I blasted the AC all day, but I was somehow always sweating. I started working on Waste World here. Huh. It was supposed to be my great comeback. Makes sense. So, you... Okay. So this is supposed to give us a bunch of answers about what's going on, right? A true ending to what happened. Did he organize the Six Pine Inn? Organize the assault on Gameworks, the virtual world Gameworks, to steal the artifacts? If so, we may have been working for the bad guys. Okay, that's about all I need. Um. Here, 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 because I will also do that. This, 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 this. So now. Hmm. 
Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. And just make a direct path for it. So we have a thousand damage now. <gasps> That's a gun. Hi. Eat it. Your turn. Go ahead. Go for it. I'll whoop that school so freaking hard. What now? Whoa. The final straw was those idiotic modders. They took my half-finished oh, game and crap. made a goddamn mockery of it. Aliens in a post-apocalyptic Wild West. Uh, it's not always about what makes sense. Sometimes no sense. it's just about what's fun. If I couldn't finish the game myself, I sure as hell wasn't going to let them do it for me. That was your first mistake. Send you back to outer space. They'll be finding your guts all over the cosmos. To take on those modders really fired me up. It was just what I needed to bring those low lives to task. Those gormless basement dwellers were going to pay whatever attempt. Can you help me? He goes on like that for a while. You must be tired of hearing that voice. We're mere pawns to him. But you can change that. Listen to me. This is important. When you see a door of light, walk back to whence you came and look to your right. Now, let's see how far I can skip you forward. <laughs> Thank you. And that's how I programmed the blood particles. I think it really contributed to the visceral pleasure of Vicious Galaxy 2, making it the obvious standout oh, in the Vicious series. Galaxy the only gripe with the game was the designs to the characters. Too old. But everyone wanted the same boring space marines from Vicious Galaxy 1. Oh, poor Lazar. Lazar was a good guy. I can't believe I'm playing a shooter right now. This is insane. This guy's off the deep end! Eventually I got my wish. There was some sort of breach with the game works. A lot. I oh, that was us! A squad of player characters from scratch after that. That was us! That was us breaching into game works, breaking in, stealing the artifact. Us, because we might come after him for doing what he did to us. And now we find ourselves at the climax of Walk. The player has to use everything they've learned to solve the ultimate puzzle and arm the bomb. Go on, you can do it. Why are you talking to me like that? Uh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, this is hurting my head, but that works. Keeping track of how I'm supposed to move while doing that is confusing. This probably oh. looks daunting. Switches, those bit. creepy eye things, and a splitter all in one puzzle. You... But it's the last one, I promise. You never got rid of those creepy eye things, did you? Why was that? Could you not get rid of them? No matter what you did? Yeah, because he said at the beginning, he said no matter what he did, he couldn't get rid of them. Even now, they haunted him. There we go. And now... Last one. Okay, got this. <laughs> got this. Can I outsmart the developer? Hopefully. Maybe. I had to lower the difficulty of that puzzle like 10 times before the average player could solve it. But great job, you figured it out. <laughs> you win. 
And sarcasm is unnecessary and petulizing. And that brings us to the present. Well, I should say, the near future. The other indie games coming out right now are crap. So, Walk is a shoe in for Game of the Year. This scene is a little glimpse into what's to come. Uh-huh. Isn't that the thing the old man had in his cabin? The end. Thanks for playing, I guess. Um, at this point, you just have to walk toward the white door frame and the credits roll. And, hey, I'm glad you turned on the developer commentary. I, I didn't have much choice. my story was as much an inspiration to you as it is to me. This is Lionel Snill, signing off. See you, Lionel. Um, Did you get all that? Interesting. When you see the white door, return from whence you came and look to the right. Crap. Here. Okay. I'm getting back into horror game territory. I'm not sure I'm okay with that. I should have gone to the light. Or at least a different light. <laughs> I realize that's applicable whether I went the right or straight forward. Tell what it is. It's a radio. Super Meat Boy Kit was not my first game. That was a lie. Count C first game. What does that mean? What the hell does that mean? Okay. Okay, here we go. So we gotta serve customers. And not let them get to us. Okay, so the customers will rip us apart if they get a hold of us. <laughs> Let's keep them all nice, drunk, happy, and intoxicated so they'll stay away from us. There's that one guy again. Oh, this is the bartender dude from the... Well, the Six Pine Inn. This is the Six Pine Inn, isn't it? Oh. Hi, Irving. It's closing time, Re Reginald. Say that can't be. It's not even dark yet. Closing time forever. Okay. I got this. I got this. What the hell is happening? Wait, just keep doing this. I will survive. loves the root beer, and he loves me. Lionel wants this. I got no control anymore. I won't leave. Very well. Oh, crap. Lionel wants this. Complete memory. Stop looking at me. You see it all now, haven't you? And you understand why we are gathered here. You have an important role to play in this, so I hope you're ready. I think. 
What exactly am I doing? My loyal patron Snipe, we are all killers? This is now my only way out. Oh, you're forming the Hexagon. It's per agreement. This would take me to Rocky, right? Mr. Shrew. Why are you staring at me? Your turn. This is not okay. What is happening? This isn't my fault. Oh crap. I must thank you for your help. The ritual was incomplete without a player. And I do hope you enjoyed your time here at the Six Pints Inn. Your patronage is valued highly. So... Was this all to use me? Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for me to meet my maker. Oh, that's very literal. Sup? Oh, crap. You're kind of a dick, so you sort of deserve it, but I feel like I should have done something to stop this. Oh, there we go. Uh, the game just crashed. I think that was intentional. Oh, look at that. Up there at the very top. Whoa. Okay. So I can just go through them anytime I want now. Interesting. What happens if I just re-enter the six point end? Drops me right here. So just to clarify, our world is a real this world, this virtual world is a real world that exists within our real world. We helped complete a ritual allowing these characters who rightfully had a reason to be pissed at their creator to kill him. Uh, and through that, we also seem to have let out something. Something really, really bad. Okay. Interest. I don't a hundred. I I mean I guess I understand the story fully. I got a good idea of what what happened and why. But okay. For right now, I'm gonna leave the series on the hex off here. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect, considering I've played Pony Island before, so I had an idea of what sort of game this might be, but this was nothing like what I expected. This was nothing like what I anticipated, and I didn't anticipate releasing that thing into the real world. Which seems to be an underlying story. And there is a lot of bits and pieces that we've not fully explored yet. And I do think the community ha the heck the community around the hex has explored these things and looked into them. And I think you should too. Seems very interesting. But for a series on the story and the gameplay, I think I've done a pretty complete job, you know? I've explored a lot of it, and maybe at some point in the future I'll try and look into the deeper lore of this. But for right now, but for right now, I think that's going to do it for this series on the Hex. 
If you enjoyed, then there's a playlist down in the description where you can watch all past episodes of this series. Um, also, there's a playthrough on Pony Island down in the description as well if you're interested in watching that. Um, other than that, if you enjoyed, then think about leaving a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, be good, be well, and I'll see all of you in the next series. Goodbye! Thank you.